Hey everybody, it's Sarah, and today we're talking about binge eating disorder. Um, it goes by the acronym as BED. If anybody was wondering like why we throw that around or anything like that, that's what it goes by. Um, and yeah, so uh, there's certain, there tends to be a certain stigma around binge eating disorder. I have no idea why it's there. It's very very common. Um, you know, there's more so than anorexia and bulimia, there's a far stretch of like sort of a spectrum of the eating disorder. So yeah, um, it can be really, really extreme and that's when you start seeing people who binge and end up not being able to leave their houses and end up not being able to move very well and not being able to basically function in life to the point where it does become a disorder and it does create disorder in your life. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have you know people who eat emotionally, or people who, um, you know, when they have a bad day, they'll come back, they'll come home from work, and that's what they'll do is they'll eat. But these people may not be even overweight or obese; they may just be eating for the wrong reasons. The only reason to eat um, is to feed yourself, and well, the only fundamental reason. Sometimes, as humans, because we're very social animals, we use it to celebrate, and that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, but basically, binge eating disorder is a problem, um, and it is a disorder. And whether or not uh, it interferes with your life, I don't think really has any sort of capacity on uh, in determining whether or not it's unhealthy or whether or not it's a problem for you. Obviously, if it's interfering with your life and you can't, you know, go to work or whatever, that's an issue. Um, but if you come home, and so that's like our far end of the spectrum, so if you come home and you eat emotionally, but you don't eat anything else, that can be a problem too, because you become malnourished. Um, that's the other thing, is that people think malnourished means emaciated. That's not true. You can be malnourished while you're a healthy weight. You can be malnourished while you're unhealthy weight. Uh, either end of the spectrum, you can be malnourished. And malnourishment is, you know, over time, it's really, really hard on the body. Um, you know, physical health consequences of binge eating disorder are, they tend to be less immediate but they're just as serious. You can run into hypertension problems, you can run into so high blood pressure, you can run into heart disease, arterial sclerosis and arterial sclerosis, so why, like narrowing and uh, hardening of the arteries. You run into diabetes, you can run into um, joint problems, you can run into this, there's some indication that uh, in research that possibly asthma can be related to uh, to obesity. Um, basically, I'm pretty sure everything's related to obesity <laughs> uh, in terms of obesity is a far stretching problem. Um, whether or not you're obese and you have binge eating disorder, um, even if you're not obese and have binge eating disorder, you're still going to run into the malnourishment problems. So when you're obese as well, you have your body starts overcompensating for what it has to carry around and for what it has to uh, deal with. Because the larger body you have, the harder your heart has to work, the harder you know your kidneys have to work, the harder your liver has to work. In other words, um, they're not as immediately devastating as say you know potassium of like 1.5, but they are just as deadly. Um, and the, the problem is that they're not taken seriously. That's the really big, huge issue. Um, for example, in my eating disorder, we actually have a binge eating disorder clinic, which is very, very rare. Um, so he doesn't just take bin or bulimic and anorexic patients, he takes binge eating disorder patients as well. But no one really thinks to refer people to his clinic um, because they don't think that this is an issue. They think that 
people who are obese as a result of an eating disorder do so because they have a lack of willpower, because they are lazy, because they don't want to face it, because they, you know, that's in their nature, and, you know, or genetics, or, like, we're, we're so keen to blame anything but the actual disorder um, for the consequences that are being dealt with. Um, yeah, so it's just, none of that's true, by the way. People with binge eating disorder are not lazy. They don't have a lack of willpower. Or they, yeah, they don't have a lack of willpower. So some of these people have more willpower than I do. Um, and so it's that's not really a very clear indication. It's not in who they are. And genetics only plays a certain part of it. Um, you know, genetics is definitely a factor, but it's not everything. There are some people out there who have really bad genetics, but are very healthy. Um, so how to avoid binging? Uh, first of all, you have to decide what is more addictive to you. That's the way that I describe binge eating disorder to a lot of people, is um, an addiction to food. And, um, yeah, so how do you, we avoid doing that? Uh, a lot of times, if you like the motions of eating, and, you know, a good first step can be binging on something that's healthy. Like, binging on a thing of baby carrots is much healthier for you than binging on, like, something that's a little bit less healthy for you. Because um, the fact of the matter is it's really hard to have too many carrots. <laughs> and um, you're going to get sick of carrots. And that's really an important realization to, to come to is that if you're going to binge, I would suggest it, because you have to and you don't have the means to to handle those urges, I would suggest binging on one food only, because by that point you get very, very sick of it, and um, you won't binge on it for too, too long. Um, that's the other thing, is that the, probably the most immediate medical consequence, uh, and I have to be careful about this, it's, it's very hard to do, but it's not impossible, is you can't eat too, too much, and basically blow your intestinal system, uh, blow your digestive system. The stomach can rupture, um, you know, your esophagus can have problems, and so it's, it's really serious, so just keep that in mind um, if you go get help. Uh, don't let someone tell you it's not. But how to avoid it, uh, so I'm all over the place today. <laughs> um, just try, like the same thing that anorexics and bulimics use, distraction, um, talking to people, writing, you know, being around people where binging is impossible um, for as long as the urge passes. A lot of times we have this, this, this coping method and it goes, okay, I'm going to put it off for 10 minutes. So if you come home from work and you're really, really stressed out, you can go, you know what, I'm going to go have a shower for 10 minutes and then if I still feel like binging at the end of that, you know, we can reassess and reevaluate. And then after that 10 minutes, we reassess, reevaluate. Do I still want to binge? Mm, I'm still not really, really sure. So I'm going to go read a book for 10 minutes. And make sure you have that list of stuff there that you can do instead of binge. And have it ready and have it accessible. And when you decide that you're not going to, you have something else to do. And eventually, the urge should come down. You can't, you can't be in that state of anxiety for so long. It's impossible. Your body's parasympathetic system will kick in and you won't have that, you won't be able to sustain that level of anxiety and therefore you won't be able to soothe, therefore you won't have to soothe it with food. Um, so yeah, I hope that was kind of helpful. Uh, I think I probably went way over time, so I'm going to have to break this up into two. But anyway, take care, have a good week.